Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I am on Team OEA and welcome to OEA The Basics Part 1, a recorded tutorial where we are going to get you familiar with all of the basics of using OEA Studio, which is the back end of OEA. Um, so we're going to start with some, some super easy things. Um, how do I turn off my camera? How do I turn off my microphone? Um, so those buttons are going to be right here, right? You can click this icon of a video camera to turn on and off your camera. Um, and the microphone is to turn on and off your mic. And for all other general settings, you're going to click on this settings wheel right here. You'll notice that you can select your camera output. You can select your microphone output. Make sure that if you're using headphones um, that you, you know, you make sure that those are selected here. You can also change your avatar, right? So you can customize that to be any emoji. You can change your display information, including your name and additional subtitle. Uh, and you can also change the skin tone for your emojis and the reactions bar, which we are gonna cover today. Where we're gonna start is in the workspace settings, right? So a workspace is what we call a collection of rooms on OEA, right? Some workspaces have two rooms, three rooms, some have 50 rooms or 70 rooms. Um, it all depends on how you build your space and what you're using the rooms for, right? But a really good place to start is with the workspace settings because the workspace settings are going to impact everything in the workspace, right? There's room settings where you can adjust certain things within the room. And then obviously you can adjust all of the different elements um, that are in each of your rooms. But overall, you wanna start with the workspace settings. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the name of our workspace in the top right corner. And you'll notice that now this right hand panel has changed to be our workspace settings. Um, so first things first, you can name your workspace right up here. This is a text box. It'll be the same whenever you're naming rooms. Uh, you can name this whatever you'd like, and it will then appear here by default. Um, you're going to see as we go through today's training, there's not a whole lot of things that you have to save in OEA, um, which is something that I personally love about it. A lot of this stuff you just adjust, and it automatically goes, um, and that's including the name of the workspace. So let's go ahead and start with these settings. Uh, just to note, we're not going to cover everything in the workspace settings today. Uh, we're not going to cover everything in the room settings or in elements or, you know, any of these buttons that you see up here. We're not going to get to all of it because I don't want this to be too long. Um, but this video should just be enough to get you through the basics. Um, one other thing I want to call out before we get started is that there is a lot of stuff in here, right? If, any, if at any time you're trying to just search for something really quickly, you can use this search properties bar um, and type anything in to quickly find it there. But let's get started with the workspace category. So a few things to call out here. You'll see the first line item is admins. Right here, there's this editor tool, right? And this is going to be um, the list of admins that can control the back end of your space, right? So you wanna be careful about who you give admin access to, right? Because um, no, they, people don't need admin access to access your space. Uh, they will only be able to see this back end view of OEA Studio in your space if you grant them admin access. And in order to do that, again, you'll just click on this editor tool, enter their email address in here, click save, and that's it. The next line item is the capacity limit, right? So this is how many people can be in your space. Um, the default is 150. Uh, we do feel comfortable having between four and 500 people ever in one workspace at the same time. Uh, we also are able to accommodate overflow workspaces if you ever have an event that you're looking at having, you know, a couple thousand people in. Um, we recommend that, you know, if you are going to have one of these larger events that you do reach out to us at team at OEA.co. Um, we're happy to help you get that set up and we can also go over sort of some of the best practices for having that many people in a workspace at one time. Um, but just keep in mind that you do need to adjust this capacity limit um, if you are planning on having more than the default of 150 people ever in your workspace at the same time. The next thing here is director only admins. Um, so you're gonna see, we're gonna learn today how to toggle between editor mode, which is what we're in right now, and director mode. So to get to director mode, you're gonna use this little icon right here of a projector. You'll notice that if I click it, it turns red. Now the editor bar has disappeared, right? So I have limited access here. I can still see the room list. I can access these rooms. Um, in the part two training, we're gonna go over how to make buttons, navigational buttons, action buttons. Um, typically, those are things that you want to be able to control as the director or as the admin of an event, and you would put those down here in the notes and controls. Um, if somebody has director-only access, 
they will still be able to push those buttons and sort of help you direct the event, but they won't be able to edit them or make new ones or anything like that. So if you want to give somebody director mode only access, so again, that's this and not the editor tool, right? What you're gonna do is you are going to add them as a director only admin here, right? So you would just enter their email address, click add, and then save that. Next thing is participant video quality. Um, I've set it high for, for this training because I'm the only one in this room, right? It's a recorded training. I want it to, to look pretty clear. Um, if you're ever having um, an event or an experience where um, there's really only going to be two, three people on screen and you don't mind, you know, using that extra bandwidth and increasing the video quality, you can definitely select high. Uh, the default is low. Um, and we recommend that you leave it on there um, just because people's computers can sort of get overloaded. It's a lot for their streams to process. People without excellent Wi-Fi might, you know, see things as fuzzy if their computers are trying to process like higher video qualities. Um, and low is, is perfectly fine. It's, it's not bad at all. And so that is, you know, the standard. Um, and we don't really recommend changing it unless, um, again, unless you fall into that category that I spoke of earlier. The next thing is the region. Um, so this is a good time to mention that if you are hosting an event or you're hosting people in general in your OEA workspace, um, everything or most things in the workspace settings are going to be things that you want to figure out prior to inviting people into your space, right? Um, you don't want to be changing things like, you know, the vanity URL, which we're going to go over in a minute, or the capacity limit during the event. Those are things that you probably want to think of prior to. Um, in particular with the region, so the region lets us know which server throughout the world you are going to be operating this space out of, right? So we've got US East, US West, Europe West, and Singapore. Um, you'll wanna select the region that is closest in general to um, the, the majority of the guests that are going to be in your space. Um, very important call out here. If you do select another server, and you change the region that this workspace is operating on, it will refresh everyone in the space's browsers. Uh, it will refresh you know, the workspace as a whole. Um, again, not that big of a deal. It's usually about a five second or less blip, but it can be confusing if people don't know that it's coming. And ideally you don't do it while there are people in the space. So just think about the region that your workspace is going to be in um, probably prior to inviting people into your space. The next thing is users. We're gonna go over user management a lot in future trainings, um, but if you open this up, this shows you a list of people who have been in your space, right? So um, there's a few different things that you can do here, and we are gonna go over that more whenever we talk about security, right? But you do actually have the ability to upload a list that will populate uh, this user's list. You can also manually add people down here. This is where you're gonna give people tags. Again, we're gonna go over all of this, but I do just wanna call it out um, in the workspace settings for now. And finally, in the workspace category, we have the vanity URL. So if you click on this editor button, right, you can enter um, a, a vanity URL here. By default, if you insert something here, right, your URL will be oea.co slash s slash whatever it is that you fill that text box in with. Um, so if you do want something there, assuming that it's available, um, you would just type it in, right? You don't need to put anything but the text, but something like that, right? And you could save it and then assuming it's available, um, it, will, it will be your link that you can use that you can send to people. A question that we get kind of a lot is if I send someone the link that I have, right? So um, the link in the back end, right, is gonna look like oea.co slash creator, right? It's gonna look different than that vanity URL. We get asked uh, pretty frequently if I send somebody that creator link, right? If I just copy and paste the URL from OEA Studio and I send it to somebody, are they going to be able to access the back end? Are they going to be able to see what I see with that link? The answer is no. Um, the only way for somebody to see this view of OEA Studio, the back end of your space, is if you give them admin access, um, again, right here. So going down to the next category, um, we have some defaults here, right? If you, um, you'll see throughout today's training, you're gonna be able to add text. You're gonna be able to add um, a reactions bar down here, right, with different emojis. If you have a certain font family or certain emojis that you want to default throughout the entire space so that you don't have to keep changing it, you can edit those right in here, right? So that's pretty useful in the defaults. 
Next category is interaction. So interaction is a huge piece of how guests um, navigate your OEA space, right? So the most important thing here is uh, enable room navigation. And we're gonna come back to this whenever we go into our specific room settings. Um, but just to call your attention here, if you enable room navigation, that means that whatever navigation style you choose, whether it's the, the default, right, this room list on the left side, your attendees will be able to see that room list and they'll be able to click into different rooms throughout your workspace. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't go into certain rooms in your space and change that room settings, right? We see a lot of times where people will want their guests to be able to access the room list in certain times throughout the event, but whenever they're in, say, for example, a presentation room, uh, they may wanna close the room list so that people cannot navigate away. That's totally fine, um, but just know that what's relevant here in the workspace settings is that if you want people to be able to navigate at all, ever, in any room in your workspace, you will need to make sure that this is checked in the workspace settings. You'll notice also that right here you have room navigation styles. In the part three training, we're gonna go over um, some of these different styles, including maps, right? So right here, you'll see different options for how the room list appears. Um, you can have your room list just show up as names. You can have it show up as images. So like the background image of each room, you can have both names and images. Um, and then map room is, is pretty common, right? It's like that's just using a room and like building a custom room that will function as a map for your space. Again, we're gonna go over all of that in more detail in future trainings. But going back up here, enable screen share, exactly what it sounds like. Um, the screen sharing button in OEA is this monitor icon right here. We're gonna go over that um, in more detail a little bit later. If you want to give guests the ability to share their screens, you'll wanna make sure that this is checked here. If you don't, uncheck it. We also do have the ability to offer a screen share whitelist. So um, in each of the rooms, you can actually limit the amount of people who see this icon here. Uh, you can restrict that based on their email addresses so that if you have um, you know, presenters or something designated presenters for an event that you want to be able to share their screen, but you don't want it to be available to anybody else, um, you, can, you can edit that there. But again, similar to room navigation, if you want screen sharing ability at all for anyone, you do need to make sure that this is checked in the workspace settings. Next up, we've got security. Um, so allow anonymous users. By default, um, whenever somebody enters any OEA space, we do ask for, um, for an account set up, right? So that's just putting in an email address and a password of their choosing. Um, if you want users to bypass this step entirely and you wanna allow anyone into your space and you don't care about knowing who came in or what their email address is, uh, then you can click to allow anonymous users. One note about this, you'll learn in today's training that um, you can do things like assign a certain face bubble to a certain person, right? You can also, we'll learn in the part two training, um, whenever you make breakout rooms and things like that, you can uh, use people's email address to send them to specific breakout rooms, okay? If you do have allow anonymous users turned on, meaning people do not have to enter an email address to enter your workspace, you will not be able to use those special features that allow you to tie people to certain rooms or to certain face bubbles because OEA is not going to know what email address they came in with. Um, so keep that in mind whenever you're thinking about that security option. Next up, our authorization options. So we have several different options for how to secure your space, right? Um, the default is all users, right? There's no specific security, right? If you share the link with someone, they're able to come in. That's all users. But if you click on this, you'll see we've got a drop down menu here. If you select password protected, another field will open up for you to put in a designated password, right? Exactly what it sounds like. You'll just need to share that password with people in order for them to access the space. We currently offer um, SSO, single sign-on options, uh, for Google Authenticator. So if your organization uses Google to log in, uh, you can then do a domain-based restriction, right? So let's say I am a member of a university and I want only people with email addresses from my university to be able to access my space, right? If your university uses Google Authenticator um, to authenticate those email addresses, then people will be able to log in via Google Authenticator on the login page, um, and it will only allow them to do so if they have your you know, university.edu email address. And so that's our SSO option right now. 
invite only, uh, if you select this option, right, you're then going to be able to click on this icon up here, okay, and this link will give you, um, this is going to be the link that, that your invite only people will be able to access the space. If you do have invite only set, the only way that people will be able to access that space is with that link. And then finally, refer only, um, a little bit more of a complex um, setup. We haven't used this too frequently, but if you are interested, um, refer only uh, will give you the ability to set another website as sort of the gateway to this space, right? So you would be telling Oye, you would enter in another website and you would be telling Oye, only people who come from this other website will, should be able to access this space, okay? So we're gonna take that back to all users um, and default. The next category is music. Um, so you'll notice in um, if you've ever been you know, in an OEA space that different rooms can have different music. And this is really fun for sort of setting the vibe of a room, right? If you have a beach setting, maybe you want some um, ambient sounds of seagulls or waves crashing or something like that versus if you had a bar setting, you might want um, you know, some more fun, upbeat music, something like that. Um, but there are definitely times we see where people just want one consistent sound throughout the entire event. Um, and so the workspace settings, right, can, can allow you to do that, right? Because the workspace settings control things for the entire workspace. So if you are trying to um, put in music for uh, every room in your workspace, you have a couple of options here, right? You can click on this editor button. This is gonna open up the asset library and this is where you can uh, choose to upload an MP3 file. Okay, so we can accommodate an MP3 file there. Um, it would probably be pretty lengthy, right, if you were gonna use it for the entire event unless you just have it looping, but that's totally your call. Alternatively, um, you can find a YouTube playlist, right, and you can drop in a link here uh, to any YouTube playlist or, you know, if you find like a four hour um, video or something with some ambient music on YouTube, you can drop that in there and it will then play throughout the entire workspace, okay? so. That is gonna be all that we're gonna cover for the workspace settings. And again, so this is just a really good place to get started um, you know, before you welcome people into your event and just as you're thinking about what it's going to take to build out your space. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is um, how to build a room, right? So you've got your workspace all set up, um, you, you know, you've got your defaults all set and, and your basics down. Now let's talk about how to build rooms. Right, so we're going to go over to the left side, okay? This is our room list. So the first thing to know about the room list is that whatever room is on the top of the room list is going to default as the page that people land on whenever they come into your space, right? So think about that whenever you are um, organizing your rooms, right? You can move rooms around by dragging them like this, right? Or you can also use this menu bar toggle right here, right? You'll notice that you can manually move it up and down like this. You'll notice here there's also a keyboard shortcut, right? So if I click command up on this room, I just moved this room up as well. So as you sort of get more comfortable with that, that's a really easy hack to do things faster. Now to make a new room, what you're gonna wanna do is you are going to click on room up here on the menu bar and you can add a new room which will then just populate immediately in your room list um, to start building. Um, but we also offer you the opportunity to import rooms, right? So there are hundreds of rooms that have been published to the OEA gallery um, by fellow creators like yourself, right? Um, your rooms are not automatically published. They are only published if you, you know, if you have a room that you wanna publish to the gallery, then you can use that option here. But in order to access those rooms and just see what else is available to you, you can click on import room and you'll see that now we've got tons of different rooms in here, right, that you can feel free to import into your space. Notably, uh, you can also filter this by tutorials, right? So the OEA team has uploaded a bunch of different tutorials, including the basics part one, part two, part three. Um, you can find those all in here. You can actually then import them into your room and learn them live in OEA. So that is a really helpful tip um, for just whenever you're getting started, right? Feel free to import these and then delete them um, as you no longer need them. Um, and let's talk about uh, room settings. So one important thing to call out is that this settings 
tab right on the right side is going to change based on what you click on within OEA. So whenever we clicked on our workspace name, now we're editing the workspace, right? If I were to click on this face bubble and tell OEA I want to edit this, right? You'll notice now it's changed to give me editing options for this. And if I click on the name of my room over here on the room list on the left side, now I'm editing the room, okay? So similar to, um, similar to the workspace, you can change the name of your room by filling in this text box right up here, right? So my room here is called the welcome page. And the next thing you'll wanna do is upload a background, right? So what you're gonna do is right under here, right, there's two options here. This black box that you see, this has the ability to change the color, right? If you just wanted your room to be a solid color, um, you know, you can edit that here. You can insert, you know, your own here. But most people like to choose, um, you know, a, their, a custom background image. And so you can do that by clicking on this icon. Again, this is gonna open up the asset library. So the asset library is a collection of all of the photos, videos, right? All of the assets that you have in your space. Right, so I have uploaded this OEA couch into here, right? And so I just click on that and that becomes the background for my room, okay? First thing that we're gonna talk about in the room settings is the capacity, right? How many people are allowed in this room at one time, okay? And that's gonna be your max participants number. Now, an important distinction here the amount of people who are allowed in your room is not necessarily equal to the amount of people that you have on screen, right? Right now, my uh, max participants of this room is set to 12, but as you can see, there's only one face bubble on the screen, right? There's only one element for somebody's camera to come into because I have not yet added any other face bubbles in this screen for, um, you know, for other people to come into, right? So, if another person were to come into this room right now, right, they would not be seen or heard on, uh, on screen. And that can sometimes be a little bit confusing depending on how your space is being configured, right? So let's say, for example, I have um, a room that's meant to be a presentation, right, or a fireside chat of sorts, right? And people are coming expecting that only two people, right, maybe there's a moderator and somebody, somebody that's answering the questions that are on screen. They are not necessarily going to expect to be on screen, Right? So I would be okay to set this max participants number to say 500, right? And that means 500 people can come into this room. Only two of them are going to be on screen, right? Because I'm only going to put in two face bubbles. Um, but um, that's, that's not going to be confusing for them, right? Because they are coming to that room expecting to be watching something. They're not necessarily expecting to be part of the conversation. But alternatively, right, what if I set my room capacity to, um, to 10? right? And I added in, say, four more face bubbles. So there's 10 people allowed in this room, but I only have five face bubbles on screen. That means that the first five people to enter this room are going to show up in those face bubbles. They are going to have their audio, their camera be on screen, and they're going to be able to talk to each other and see each other. But the capacity is set to 10, so theoretically five more people could join that room. And if those five more people join, there's not gonna be a face bubble for them on screen. So that may be a little bit confusing for them because um, they can see and hear the conversation going on, but they might wonder why they themselves are not on screen. So general good rule of thumb, if you are building a room uh, that's meant for you know, conversation, for people to, to interact with each other, um, try to make sure that the max participants in your room is the same amount of face bubbles that you have on the screen, right? So let's talk about that now. Let's talk about how to add people to your room. So I'm gonna set the max participants in this uh, room to be four, okay? So that means my room is ready to receive um, four people if I create the face bubbles for them, right? So how to add a face bubble. You're gonna click on this icon of a person up here, a participant video element. And that's now ready for somebody's face, face bubble to come into, okay? So you'll notice though, it's kind of hard to see, right? Maybe where this person would be, how big they would be. Is that too big? Is that too small? I'm not really sure. Um, do I want to round the corners? Do I want to do any sort of like special features with them? It's kind of hard to see um, and edit that in real time. So OEA gives you the ability to actually put a fake participant in this spot to help you see um, what exactly it is that you're editing. Right, so if we go back to the room settings, I'm gonna add in three fake participants. 
Okay, you'll notice that now since I have a face bubble in this room, my fake friend here automatically appears, right? So now we can see as we edit, right, what exactly this person's face bubble would look like, right? And it's super popular in OEA to want to, you know, customize certain things about this face bubble, right? You'll notice that on mine, I have some rounded corners. We can add perspective shadows to face bubbles to give it a little bit more realism, right? So you can do that by clicking on the person that you want to edit. And most popular things here, right? You're gonna scroll down. Borders and corners, great place to start, right? You can drag someone's corners. You see how it changes there. You can also make them circular or elliptical and then play with that. You'll notice that now I have my fake person in this. It's a lot easier to tell what this person actually looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this person some rounded corners. Okay, maybe a nice perspective shadow, right? You'll see that that just appeared there. Okay. And um, now since, you know, I set my room capacity to be four, I want to make sure that I add in two more people, right? But if I add in another person, right, now I have to do all of this work all over again, right? Rounding the corners and giving them a shadow. It's not that much work, but what if I don't want to do it again? Well, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this. And this is as easy as copying and pasting this. So you can, you know, use edit, copy, edit, paste, or I'm going to use a little Keyboard shortcut here, Command C, Command V, right? Okay, so now I've got four participant video bubbles in my room, right? So now my room is ready to receive four people. So the max capacity is four. There's four people on the screen. It's very clear that if somebody comes into this room, they're going to be seen on screen. And if, if you know, a fifth person tried to enter the room, they would get a little error message that says, this room is currently full, try again later. So that is how to add people in, um, in a room, right? Now, what if um, I want to add, what if I wanna add a spot for multiple people to be able to join in this room, right? So we do have the ability to do a grid chat and a grid chat is right here, right? It's a multi-user video chat. We call it a grid chat on Team OEA. Um, so if I click on that, right, I've got another blank box. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete these spots for now so that my fake friends appear in my grid chat. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right here and let's go ahead and add in some fake people again. Okay, so this is a really helpful feature because um, this will auto size the people based on how many are in it, right? So if I only had three people, you'll see that the, they get a little bit bigger, right? But as people come in, it auto fits them to the box that I set up, okay? Why would you use this? Um, this can be really, really helpful for showing audience participants that may not be actively involved in the conversation that's happening on screen, but you still want people to be able to see each other, see you know who's here, um, and see um, you know see see themselves on screen. So what we have the ability to do is, first of all, you can you know you can leave this as is. But an important note about OEA is that we don't recommend that you ever have more than 20 people on screen ever at the same time, right? It's just a lot for your computers to process. Um, your face bubbles get smaller, you know, the more people that you have to add on screen. So we don't recommend having more than 20 people ever on screen at the same time, right? But what if you have 50 people in a room, right? And, and you do want them to be on screen occasionally. Well, with a grid chat, you can use something that's called audience mode. And that basically means um, that you'd be making a carousel and it will rotate people through so that you can see who's here without having everybody on screen at the same time. So how do you build a carousel? The first thing you're gonna wanna do is click on the grid chat so that you're editing the grid chat on the right side, right? And let's go ahead and make these people circular, right? I kinda like that look better, okay? And what you're gonna do is you are first going to tell OEA what is the max amount of people who can be in this grid chat, right? So if you have 50 people that are coming to this page, right, that are gonna be in this room at the same time, you're gonna wanna make sure that you up the max participants to 50, right, so that your grid chat can contain that many people. Now, it doesn't mean that all 50 of those people are gonna be on screen at the same time if you use audience mode, and that's what we're gonna go over next. In the meantime, let's go ahead and just put that as 50 since that's our sample number, right? Now we're gonna scroll down 
and we're going to go to interaction. You'll see here we have audience mode. And immediately when I click audience mode, you'll notice that now this grid chat is going to start carouseling people through. Okay, so you see whoever's on screen and you see that you know there are plus four others, right? So the default here is six and because I have 10 fake people in this room, you can see six of them on screen and then you can also see that there are four others in this carousel, okay? If that movement is too distracting, right, it goes every five seconds, you can change the audience rotation time by dragging this bar up, right? Okay. You can also change how many people ever appear on screen in the grid chat, right? So if I only wanted three people to appear on screen, I could do that there. If I wanted eight people, right, that's totally up to you. Again, just make sure that as you're configuring this, you're thinking about who else is on screen and you're making sure that there are never more than 20 people, 20-ish people um, on screen ever in this room at the same time, okay? Um, there are definitely times where we hear that people, you know, they want people to be able to see each other and they want to use this grid chat, um, but these might be passive participants and they don't need to be um, speaking, right? So they may, you may want to mute them by default so that in case somebody, you know, forgets to turn their microphone off, forgets to mute, uh, very common in these, in these days, um, that, that, you know, you just go ahead and do that for them so that they cannot be, uh, they cannot be heard by default. So there's two volume bars in the interaction settings of a grid chat, okay? The external volume bar says how loudly the people who are outside of the grid chat, so me, for example, right, I'm another user in the space, but I'm not in the grid chat, um, how loudly I can hear the people in the grid chat. The internal volume is how loudly the people in the grid chat can hear each other, right? So there's definitely times where you could play with this. Um, people have, um, have definitely used this for something like trivia in the past, right, where you have two grid chats and you put team one in one grid chat and team two in the other grid chat and they can hear each other, right, because internal volume is up, but they can't hear um, anything outside of their own grid chat by turning down the external volume, right? But if you want to just mute the grid chat and that's all you're trying to do, what you would do is you would want the external volume and the internal volume both to be set to zero. Okay, so that is how to make a grid chat. Now let's go back to participant bubbles, right? Because there's some helpful stuff in here. Okay, um, there at the top of the settings, there is something called user assignment, right? And you'll notice that there's this little drop down menu here auto, click, and manual. Okay, auto is the default. That means that by, by default, this bubble, this participant video element that you have added in here will automatically receive someone's camera, right? So if I added another person in here, okay? If I have another bubble in here and I had a friend that came into this room, they would automatically appear there, right? Um, but there are other options, right? So if you click click, right, that would be a click to join spot. So you can actually have, um, you know, people be able to just click into that and then click out of it if they, you know, if they want to leave the spot. This is really helpful for things like hand raiser spots, right, where you have a presentation or an event where you, um, you know, you don't want everybody, again, like maybe you put them all in a grid chat and they're all muted, but you want to offer them a space where they can click into to sort of like take the mic and ask a question, um, you know, be heard in that way and then just be able to go off screen just as easily. So that's a good example of when you would use a click to join spot. Um, it'd be helpful to add in maybe some text, right? So we're gonna go over how to make text elements, but to put in some text here that just like is right next to the face bubble and says, um, click here to be heard or to ask a question, something like that. Something that's also pretty popular that people like to do with click to join spots is to change the background color, right? Because if I have this on screen, um, but nobody's in it, people might not know that it's there. And so to do that, you could just go to style, right? And maybe you could make this background color. Keep in mind in OEA, the top bar, whenever you're adjusting the color is for the color. The bottom bar is for the opacity, right? So I might do something like that that suggests that there is a spot for somebody to click in here too, right? So this with accompanying text or something makes it very clear that, okay, you know, oh, that's a spot that I can click into. That's click to join. Um, and the last option is manual, right? So if you click manual, you'll notice that a text box appears for you to put in an email address. 
So this is what I was talking about earlier, where um, if you have a certain spot that you want a certain person to go into, you would put their email address in here, and then automatically, um, once, you, once you make that setting, um, only that person will be able to fill in that spot, and they will automatically appear there whenever they enter the room. Nobody else will. Um, important call out, just to say it again, if you do allow anonymous users, um, you won't be able to use this feature. And it's also important to think about uh, the fact that if you do tie this to somebody's email address, you need to make sure to tell them to come into the space with that email address, right? If they enter um, with a different email address, OEA is not going to know that it's them because email addresses are the unique identifiers in OEA. Um, so just something to think about whenever you're making those spots. So now we've talked about how to add in people into our room, right? Let's go ahead and go back to our room settings. Okay, so we're gonna click on the name of our room. All right, so we've got no use for these fake people anymore, okay? Um, and we've learned about how to add people, how to add fake people, and how to set our, um, our room max capacity, right? Next thing that we wanna go over is music, okay? So we went over in the workspace settings how to set uh, music for the entire space. It's a very similar process for setting music for the room. So this editor icon can be used to upload an MP3 file. And similarly, if you click on this text box right here, right, you can drop in a YouTube link as well. You can have this autoplay right, by checking this box here. You can set the live music volume um, and you know, adjust that using this bar here. And um, if you don't really have like a certain sound in mind, you're not really wanting to find a YouTube, uh, a YouTube playlist or you know, upload an MP3, we have a bunch of different um, preset sounds in here for you to use. So feel free to experiment with, um, you know, with these and just see if you like any of these um, as your sort of room mood. Okay, so that's music in a space. Next is interaction. So if you recall, um, we did set to enable screen sharing in the workspace settings. Um, but there is a, um, there is, you know, there's further options for customization in the room settings. So um, if you want people to be able to screen share in this room, again, you would click to enable screen share, right? You want to make sure that this is checked. You'll notice that if this is checked, you have these two items down here, right? These are screen sharing email lists. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where you can whitelist a certain amount of people to be able to be the only ones who can share their screen, okay? So email list, this is if you want to, um, if you want to add people by email, User tags is if you want to tag certain people, right? If you want to give everybody a screen share or tag, right? Who's going to need to share their screens and tag them that way. We're going to go over tagging in a lot more detail um, in, the, in the part two and three training. But that is how you whitelist um, screen sharing. Next up, we have reactions. A very popular interactive element in OEA. Um, let's go ahead and enable reactions here. Okay, so now we've got this reactions bar down here. Um, these are really fun. People love reactions in OEA, right? They are a great way to have some audience participation. They're a good way for people to express how they're feeling, to have some fun. Um, they can be a really, really great benefit to your events and your spaces. Let's start from the top here. So allow custom reactions. If you have this checked, right, you'll see that you get um, an option to select any emoji that you'd like, right? Um, whether or not you enable people to add their own emojis just depends on how much you trust your audience, right? And how much um, it matters if they do use a certain emoji. Um, if you don't want to give them the option to choose their own and you would rather just pre-select which ones uh, they use, then you would uncheck to allow custom reactions, right? Allowing text reactions. So you'll see here we do have the ability to send text, right? And it just has your name. It appears and then it disappears. Um, if you don't want that, you find that distracting, you can turn that off by unchecking allow text reactions. Um, enable audio reactions. So we currently have one audio reaction. We are working on a few more, um, but that is our clapping emoji. So if you click on the clapping emoji, right, then it's going to produce a, an audio with an audible clapping sound. If you find that it's getting too loud, feel free to you know, adjust that here under the audio reaction volume. Next thing, super popular feature that people like to manipulate is the reaction emoji height. 
right? So by default, this bar is dragged all the way up, which means that as people send reactions in the space, they flood the screen, right? Sometimes this is really fun. And sometimes if you have a presentation on screen or you, know, you have people talking or it's, um, you know, it can be a little bit distracting. And so what we recommend doing is just dragging this down I tend to find that 0.3 is about a good space, right? So that the emojis come up about a third of the way up, right? This can make it so that they're not blocking whatever you have on screen. Um, and, and that's a feature that gets used pretty popularly. Uh, and then we have reaction emojis. So here you'll notice that you can, this is where you select, right? What appears on this bar down here. So you can either copy and paste um, emojis directly into this text bar, or you can click here to select Right, anything that you'd like and you'll notice that if you select it it appears in that bar right there okay you also have the ability to upload custom reaction images right so if you have a certain photo or a logo or something that you want to add into the reaction bar you can do that by clicking on this tool right here and you can add in something from your computer um, and uh, it will be added to the you know the the emoji the reactions bar um, there are some more things in here. We're not really going to get into this yet, but we will be going over particularly target rooms um, in the part three training. Uh, we do have the ability to target reactions to another room. Um, and so uh, that, that can be pretty helpful for setting up events. Um, and we'll go over that again in the part three training. Next up in the room settings is navigation. So um, we went over this a little bit in the workspace settings, but this is a really important part of learning um, of learning how your guests are going to navigate throughout your space, right? So it's important to think about what the navigation is in each room, okay? There's two things that I wanna call your attention to. The first is hide room navigator, okay? If you have this checked in your room settings, that means that in this room, the room list on the left side, right? This is gonna be collapsed, effectively meaning that people, once they are in this room, will not be able to navigate away from that space, right? People use this in um, typically like presentation rooms, auditoriums, right? If there's something like a main stage event that's going on and you don't want people to be able to wander off and go to some of the other rooms, right? You would wanna make sure that you check to hide the room navigator so that in this room and in just this room, right? Cause we're in the room settings, the room list on the left side is going to be collapsed, okay? The second thing is show in room navigator. So what this means is that in rooms where the room navigator is shown, right? In rooms where this is unchecked, okay? Which means that the room navigator is visible, right? If the room list is visible, if you have this checked, that means that this room is gonna show up in the room list, okay? So hide the room navigator means that in this room, you're collapsing the room list. Show in room navigator means that in rooms where the room list is shown, this room will show up for people to be able to click into, okay? So if you have a private room, right, like maybe an organizer's room or a tech support lounge that you want to keep private and you don't want your guests to be able to access it while they're in the space, you are gonna wanna uncheck show in room navigator so that um, it doesn't appear for them, okay? Now you'll notice that as I unchecked show in room navigator, we received two more line items, okay? we have the ability to actually turn on and off rooms for certain people. So in order to turn off, um, in order to, to show it only to certain people or to hide it only from certain people, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna tag those users. And again, we'll go over that more in the part two training. You'll wanna tag those users and then say, for example, I only wanted this room to be shown to somebody with the tag team one, right? I would open this up, right? So I would either, you know, put the tag in here to hide it from those people or for here, okay? I would show it to, right, team one or something like that, okay? So that is navigation. Um, that There's a lot more here, right, in the actions. Um, we're not going to go over it today just so that this doesn't get too lengthy. Um, but that is the basics of the room settings in OEA. So again, so workspace settings, you're clicking up to the top right corner and room settings, you're just clicking on the name of your room on the left-hand side. Next, we're gonna go over a few more basic things for um, you know, popular options for setting up a room. So the first one is gonna be a chat box, okay? 
So if you want to add a chat box to your room, you can add that in there. Um, you can also edit this to look like whatever you'd like it to look like. Okay. So style is a pretty popular um, feature here. You can adjust the header color, right, to be whatever you want. Then you can adjust header text color, right? Feel free to like play around with all of this. Um, you can also make, you know, the background opaque if you're looking for, or sorry, more transparent. If you're looking for, you know, a sort of custom look like that. Um, again, all of this is configurable um, in the style settings. Okay, so that's how to add a chat box. And then the T, right up here, that's gonna be text. If you wanna add in text, right, you can do that here. You can type it in here. Okay, so maybe I have that here. I can adjust the color right here. Select any color. The font, I can select by clicking on this, this AA right here, right? You'll notice we've got a ton of fonts for you to choose between. Okay, and then I can adjust what this looks like just by playing with these settings, right? Text size, I can bold it. I can add a background color. Okay, I can, if I add a background color, I can make it, you know, have like a corner radius. Um, all of this stuff that you can do with text. Okay. So, um, the final thing that we are going to go over is um, how to really, really customize your face bubbles in your room, right? So I think oftentimes um, you've probably seen that things are angled in a certain way, right, to make them more realistic. Um, and so we're gonna go over how to do that now. So first I'm gonna go ahead and add in a few more people to my room, right? So again, I'm just copying and pasting so that I have the nice look that I want. And I'm gonna go back to my room settings and I'm gonna add in my three fake friends again. Okay, so it looks like we're not really all fitting on this couch, right? So I'm gonna drag this person to be down here, right? But this isn't looking super realistic to me, right? I kind of wanna angle this person to be um, in a different frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this participant bubble and I'm gonna hold down D. When I hold down D, you'll see that this red outline comes up here, okay? What I can do now is shift the corners, right? In any way that I'd like to give this person some depth, right? Give them a little angle here, okay? I can do this with um, any person. I can do it however I'd like, right? You'll notice that you can really play with this here, you know, um, and do that, right? However you'd like. So let's go to director mode. Now you'll notice I can put myself right in this person. But now you'll see that this person is actually draggable, right? So this participant bubble is set to be able to be dragged anywhere throughout the space, right? How did I do that? So let's click on this person and you'll notice that, right, if you scroll down in the settings, this person is set to be draggable. You can also set, right, how, how much you want them to be able to be draggable, right? You can also make them resizable, rotatable, right? That gets really fun in more social settings, nightclubs, bars, things like that. Um, feel free to play around with um, how to sort of edit the interactive, um, you know, how people can interact with their face bubbles, if they can drag themselves, um, you know, or if they're just, you know, standard, if you just want them to be able to sort of select a new face bubble to be in. Um, you can feel free to, to set all of that in these settings. So you have now learned the basics of our workspace settings, right? You've learned the basics of our room settings, okay? And you've learned how to add in participant elements, including single participant video windows, multi-user video chats, otherwise known as grid chats, chat boxes, right, text, Okay. And you've noticed you, you, you've learned how to put in emojis. Um, you're off to a really good start. Um, in the part two training, we are going to talk about the basics of directing and running an event in Oye, right? Which includes these two buttons up here, your action buttons and your breakout buttons. Um, so if you're curious as to, you know, how to make things happen, how to move people around the space, be sure to tune in to the part two of the basics training. Uh, in the meantime, 
please keep in mind that the OEA team is always here to answer your questions. You can always feel free to reach out to us at team at OEA.co and we are always around to pop into your space, help you answer any questions that you have uh, and really provide any, any level of support that you're looking for. Uh, with that said, thank you so much for joining part one of the basics trainings and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks.